Hello guys and welcome to the New World Order. This game is made by PhD Games. It's a two to five player game and takes about 60 minutes to play. Uh, this is a tile game, but it's also a tableau game. On your turn, you'll be choosing one of three actions to gather investment cards and place them onto your tableau or to buy one of these tiles here or finally remove your stacks because you have a limited space available in order for you to place cards down. Your objective is to score the most points, AKA have the most tiles and have a certain variety of tiles in order to score bonus cards at the end of the game based on the colored tiles that you have. Your opponents will be doing the same and gathering the tiles that they need with unique characters and abilities as well as bonuses that their characters provide. Will you score the most points and become the new world order in this game? Find out as I explain how to set it up how to play, and of course, my review. To begin setup for the New World Order game, the first thing you do is you're going to take the achievement tiles and you're gonna place them in a pyramid formation. There are two rules for the pyramid, and the first rule is that there cannot be a thousand card or thousand tile in the first two areas. Uh, the other rule is that the top tile must be 300 points or less. Take all the tiles, shuffle them, and place them down in a 4x4 for the first grid, a 3x3 on top of that for the second, a 2x2 on top of that, and finally one tile face up on top of those. Then give every single player a character. It could be the Goebbelist or the Bilderberger or the royalty card, and there's a variety of different characters, and based on the number of players playing the game or variants, we'll determine which of these characters you can and cannot use. Additionally, each character is gonna have their own unique ability, a bonus for a different type of uh, achievement card that you can gain, and it's going to also have three cards that you can utilize at the beginning of the game. My royalty card is gonna give me a diamond mine, a gold mine, and a silver mine to start the game. I'll take each one of these cards and place them in one of my slots. Each game has a number of slots based on the number of players. In a two player game, there are seven slots, which means you can have seven different types of cards um, in these seven different areas. And the same is said for the globalists. They're gonna get the casino chain, the IT and electronics, and the weapon industry. Give one player the starting player token, place all the additional tokens uh, in the game, as well as cards off to the side, and then you're gonna have industrial cards. Industrial cards are going to be shuffled very well, and then they're going to be dealt. You'll deal 13 of them face up uh, right uh, next to the uh, achievement tiles. And if you're playing with the royalist or royalty, you'll have 15 whenever they have the first player marker. If you want, however, to make the game go faster, you can instead deal out 15, tile, uh, 15 cards in general, but uh, you're going to have to take out the royalty card and make somebody else use some other different type of card. It's just a way to kind of speed the game along. After you've done that, the game's basically ready to go. The player with the first player marker will start the round off by taking the first action. Well, let's talk about actions and of course how to play. New World Order has three base actions and a pass action. One of the base actions is to pick up cards from the industrial card zone. When you pick up cards, you can pick up any number of the same named card. So for instance, if I have two alternative fuels here, I can take both of those cards and place them in one of my open slots. If I already have a card or cards called alternative fuels, I can stack these cards on top of them. As you stack cards, you're going to gain a value with them based on the numbers on the bottom of the card. Have two of these, it's worth 50. Three is worth 100, four is worth 200, and five is worth 300, and so on and so forth. When you place these in one of your open slots, you're going to be done and you will pass. You only take one of the three actions. Another action that you could take is you can sell. If you have enough value on your field, you can sell up to two of the different card stacks that you have to purchase one of these advancements or achievement tiles here. Um, and each of them have a value on the bottom and the top portion of the tile. This one says 200, so in order to purchase this, I would have to have four of these alternative fuel cards. If I did, I could sell these by discarding them and I could take this tile. Whenever you take a tile from the stack, as long as no tile is touching them from the top portion of a stack, you'll flip those tiles over. New tiles will be revealed and will be able to be purchased by any player that is their turn. The next action that you can take in the game is you can sell or discard, I should say. You can discard any stack of any of the different portions that you have. So if I have all seven spaces filled and I don't use one of them or can't use one of them, I can discard that into the discard pile, thusly freeing up spaces for me to pick up new industrial cards on a later turn. And the last action you can take is pass. 
If I were to pass, I'm done. And everybody else can keep playing in the round up until the point where everyone passes. Once everyone passes, the round is over. You're going to fill up the board, leaving any remaining industrial cards here, up to 13, or if you're playing the variant, 15 cards. And you'll progress from there. The person who first passes is going to take this and will be the first player of that next round, and they will begin that round, taking an action, taking an action, taking an action, up until pass, pass, and pass, and then a new round. The game is gonna end when one of two things happens. The first thing is that all of these achievement tiles get picked up. And the second is if all the industrial cards from the deck get removed. Once that happens, you'll trigger the end game. During the end game, you will check to see the tiles that you have and any of these bonuses that you can pick up. For each tile that you have, you'll set aside three of them and if they have the same color, you can take one of these cards based on that color. Oh, have four, three orange cards? Take this one here, the New World Order card. Have a three blue ones, End of Famine. These will give you bonus points at the end of the game. You can gain additional bonus points in the game by securing all of the different three types of uh, the types of the, of the character that you have that, that they like. So if you have, for instance, the Silver Mine, and you manage to get all six of them at any point in time, you'll take one of these little uh, pyramids and you will score 100 points at the end of the game. Um, additionally, the very bottom of the card, it'll tell you of a unique bonus that you'll get based on one of these cards. So for instance, the royalty wants to be able to get the uh, human cloning. And if you're able to pick that card up at the end of the game, then you're gonna get an extra bonus of 200 points. And scoring is relatively easy. All of your tiles are worth a number of victory points. Each of these little tokens here are worth 100. If you're able to uh, secure any of these guys here, these are worth 500. And if you have the most points, you will be the winner. And that's basically the idea of the game. Gathering these cards, placing them in certain areas, securing these uh, tiles here, and gaining bonuses at the end of the game. There's a bunch of variety as far as what type of cards there are, some unique action tiles that are in the game and how those functions. Little, little bits of different things here, which I think we'll talk about in my review. But for the basic idea, I think you get the idea for how the game plays. Okay, some nuances. Nuance number one is that all your characters have an ability. Like I said previously, for royalty, instead of the 13 cards that come out on the field you'll have 15 whenever you are the person who starts uh, the globalist is able to during the game take the action cards and put them in separate slots as opposed to the seven main ones for a two-player game and there are less slots with more players I believe it's five slots as opposed to seven when you're playing less but I could be wrong on that there are also unique cards in the game too, like dividends here. Uh, this is going to give you straight up 200 currency to sell in order to purchase the cards on the stack here. However, they don't stack themselves and they are not in any type of set. They're just bonus value, which actually is, can be pretty good depending on what is available to you in the stacks here. And there's these three or four different action cards. I'll go over a couple of them. Uh, this one is above the law. You can place this in one of your seven slots and it will let you on the next round uh, have a new turn immediately after the original turn. Uh, there are also two of these guys here. These are both play immediately. When they drop on the field, you do what they say, you discard them, and then you replace them. One is that all players may discard <laughs> one of their cards or sets, or blackmail. The player with the least victory points takes one card, or two cards, depending on the number of cards in your set, um, from the player with the most victory points. So it's a way of like removing, uh, giving a little bit of a heads up for a player who's kind of behind. And so there are unique little special cards that come into play, but for the most part, it's gonna be these industrial cards. Okay, so the game. This is a tableau management game. You're gonna be flipping over a ton of cards. Whoever goes first is typically going to have the advantage, and so passing first on the round is gonna be beneficial, but if you pass, you give the other players the opportunity to take any of the remaining cards and place them in their stacks. That being said, you have a limited number of spaces, and if you take cards that may not be useful to you in the next round, it might fill up your slots and make you waste actions removing those cards at a later time. So there's this push and pull and like determinism as to what do you really want to do as the game moves forward. Uh, sometimes passing first might be beneficial if there's nothing you really need after taking maybe a couple actions. Uh, sometimes purchasing is really powerful. It really, it really, really just depends on what this board of this, this stack of cards here presents for you.
Uh, there's obviously better opportunity in some areas, depending on what is flipped over, because there are different values for the different types of industrial cards. Sometimes it'll be a set of four, and with just two of them, you can get 200 value. In fact, up to four of them will get even 900. And other times, you might have a set of six, and in order to get all six of them, it's only worth 300. And so there are going to be specific cards that are going to be more held to value than other cards. And especially if you are looking for certain types of those cards, they are definitely going to be looking, uh, you're going to be looking for them specifically. And uh, there are more cards than the number of cards in the set. So if there's a four set, I think there's at least six of them, if not more. So I just as a little, for those of you who picked up the game, like don't, you know, you can go through the cards if you want as well, but you don't run out if you lose just two out of the four of them. Um, <laughs> uh, what's also cool about this game too, is you're, you're checking constantly not only the value of the tiles here because it's important to gather the more expensive tiles because they're worth points at the end of the game but you also want them to be a certain color variation because not only do you score victory points for certain types of tiles but also if you get the right quantity of tiles you can gain more of these cards likely you'll get two maybe three of them at the end of the game but still 1500 points or a thousand points is a big chunk of points it's also nice to score little bonuses along the way with these little triangles if you're able to secure your specific sets we know time throughout the game and uh, collecting them is, is useful your abilities are also pretty cool. I think all of the abilities are actually pretty much on point. They're all uh, basically fair. Nothing, I didn't see any of them I didn't like. Some of them are only gonna be used in a certain number of games, but they are all really cool little ideas for the different player abilities. Uh, the art and style for the game. Actually, so I really like all the industrial cards and the uh, these tiles, the achievement tiles. They all look really cool and they function really well for the game style. The idea of kind of, you're creating this new world order and there's capitalists and globalists and royalty and all these different people trying to compete against each other to like, you know, control what the new world order is going to be. And so these all function very well and understanding like, oh, the royalty, they all want, they want the precious metals and the globalist is looking for all the different technology and so on and so forth. And the art does a good job of those. Uh, the character art is, eh, meh, in my opinion, I'm not a super huge fan of the character art and the box art, uh, it, it doesn't do too much for me if I'm going to be honest. It's not bad, I wouldn't say any of the art is bad in this game, but I definitely prefer the card art and the tile art here, I think it looks a lot better and it works really well for the game. That being said, I don't utilize the box when playing and the characters, it's fine, not a big deal. Uh, as far as the quality goes, this is a prototype, things will probably be changed as the game goes on. I, I, I'm pretty Pretty sure um, and so the cards work fine they feel fine they're a little tiny a little harder to read maybe for somebody who's older uh, but everything is pretty much written out in numbers and it's pretty much straightforward as to how you can do this stuff and what's really cool too like for instance when you want to sell certain things like for instance having a silver mine you need three cards in order to sell the silver mine you can't just sell it by itself and it tells you based on the blacked out numbers here on the silver mine the 10 and the 30 for one and two are blacked out so at three it says 50 and it's yellow which means you can sell all three of these guys so you have to have three in order to sell this set but you can sell them for more and ramping up cards is important too as you gather the certain types of cards in the stacks here and obviously as you remove these tiles they're going to be flipping over and more unique cards are going to be coming out which all have their own unique little brand of flavor text which works really well as well and being able to remove those kind of opens up new tiles and as you open up new tiles new colors pop out and look there's all three green ones here and now i can go ahead and pick up these three green tiles hopefully if i'm able to purchase them and that will acquire me one of these cards in the game a cure for all of the diseases which is, is very nice i'd like to have that in real life <laughs> so anyway yeah that's that's the basic idea of the game and i i think it works really well it's a lot of fun uh, I like tableau management. I like the idea of removing these cards and fighting with each other to gain these certain tiles. I remember when I was playing this game, I was like, wow, this is really tight and feels really good. And the end game scoring on multiple games was very close. Two things. One thing, the game lasts a little too long in two players. I definitely suggest removing royalty completely in this game and just playing with trumpet dropping out 15 cards. So it speeds up the game's process. Um, or maybe even removing a certain number of tiles from, I, I don't know how you do it exactly, but just kind of reduce it just down a little bit in a two player game mode. Uh, three, four players, it's fine, it doesn't bother me so much, but we were going through it and at three fourths of the way, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, okay, it's starting to get a little long. And that was the one thing about it. But
but otherwise how the game plays is really, really cool. Really crunchy, really tight. And this card selection aspect of the game is a lot of fun. It's not super confusing, but it presents enough strategy and challenge to where you're gonna enjoy playing the game and your selection process. And when you kind of choose to stop and pass is gonna make a big difference as opposed to when you choose to keep drawing and how much you draw. And you might have like five cards left over at the end and everybody else has passed and you're like, do I just take it all or nothing? or one or two, and you have to make these decisions. And they're really cool little decisions in this game. So if you're interested in taking a look at the game New World Order, there'll be a link down below in the description for you to go ahead and take a look at this Tableau game that involves also this cool pyramid of gathering unique achievements throughout the game. <laughs> it's fun, it really is. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, the game New World Order. If you're interested in picking the game up, like I said, there's a link down below. And if you think we've deserved it, if you appreciate us, if you love us, there's a subscribe button and a bell notification button that you can push right now. You can also check out our website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our live streams are every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games just like this one every week. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward for you to join our new world order. Later.